Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. You're here tonight because uh, Korg is very used to being in a leadership position with keyboards and, and helping define what a keyboard should be capable of doing. And we're about to do that again in a very game-changing way. So when you look at the landscape of flagship keyboards, for lack of a better term, we think about some specs that, uh, that look good on paper that we might use to judge and quantify an instrument before we even play it. Polyphony is a good one. How many notes can you play at once? Even with today's modern instruments, you can hit a brick wall. You're playing a complex piano piece with lots of sustain uh, or an orchestral package. You can run out of notes. So what if the instrument could automatically kick itself into four-wheel drive and distribute the power exactly where it's needed? ROM size, another good one that we end up talking about a lot. How big is your internal waveform memory? Usually measured in megabytes. So what if an instrument could incorporate technology that could blow that spec so far out of the water it wasn't even worth talking about anymore? And in the, uh, in the keyboard industry, you also may have heard a, a word, uh, rompler. <laughs> Dirty word. <laughs> Considering all the artistry that goes into programming a synthesizer, it's a pretty disparaging term. So what if we could give people a reason to never use that word again? So to answer all these questions, and uh, maybe a few more that you didn't even know you had, Korg is very proud to present Kronos. The Kronos Music Workstation is a huge leap forward in technology, playability, and sound. It does things that no other instrument can do, and it does them in style. So what you're looking at here is the 61 key version with synth action, and here's the 73 key version with weighted keys, RH3 graded hammer action piano keys, giving a piano player a new option in portability in a professional instrument. Over here is our 88 key weighted version, also with RH3 graded hammer action piano keys. So uh, looks awfully nice so far, doesn't it? We've got a beautiful eight inch color touch view display is it looking good on the screen out there? It's looking pretty good here. That piano looks pretty good too, right? It sounds awfully nice. What you're listening to is a German sampled grand piano. It uses long, unlooped samples, which you can still hear ringing out. And uh, this library, in and of itself, occupies 4.7 gigabytes of space. Remember when ROM used to be an issue? We have changed the game. So the first game changer that you're going to hear about tonight is that these sounds, this library and others like it, are being played directly off an internal solid state drive. The industry seems to be obsessed with fast loading times. We say, why load at all if you don't have to? So right from within this display, I can interact with physical properties of the piano. If I want to, I can raise and lower the lid position. I can add damper resonance. mechanical noises such as the damper lifting off the keys, and I can change the note release. So we're interacting with these samples in a very meaningful way. This is just one of nine. SGX1 is one of nine synth engines built into Kronos. In a world of sampling-based, sample-based workstations, Kronos stands out. Samples are just the beginning. So we're gonna take a guided tour of Kronos tonight, and as I mentioned, I'd like to bring up some artists that are going to uh, help us show off this SGX1 premium piano engine with a little something extra as well. So if I could please welcome two artists that are very unique at doing what they do, jazz phenom Eldar and master percussionist David Fingers Haynes.
So uh, you heard some pretty breathtaking drums there. Those drums are another sample library that's stored on the solid state disk and is being played back directly from the disk. So we go beyond the piano with this technology. A workstation keyboard like Kronos should be a toolbox of inspirational things that don't let you feel limited by your technology, but instead take your music further. And that's just one of nine. So moving on to our uh, next synthesis engine, this is EP1, our electric piano engine. And to help me demonstrate it, I'd uh, like to call upon the services of a very good friend, one of the genius minds behind much of the programming that you hear in Kronos. He's a founding member of the best voicing team in the industry, Mr. Jack Hotel. Join me. Before we jump into uh, EP1, would you like to uh, play the Japanese grand? Got a German one. We've also got a Japanese grand that I think you'll really enjoy. Multiple libraries of pianos, different tonality, and of course, as you saw Jack reaching for a knob, there are other places to go. You're never alone with your pianos. There's modulation waiting for you right at your fingertips. Now, our next synth engine, just starting the tour, is, uh, as I said, EP1. Here, we can faithfully recreate electric pianos. So, we have four flavors of Tyne electric piano, the Mark I, the Mark II, the Mark V, and the Dino Mod. Would you uh, be able to give us a quick example of a, uh, a Tyne electric piano? Nice. Yeah, the face is important. So as I mentioned, we've got different flavors here, the, reed, uh, the time based electric pianos, and we've also got some wonderful reed based electric pianos. So. Now, as I'm playing with these instruments, I can touch the front panel, and now I have the actual instrument right in front of me. From here I can select an effect, and these effects are vintage effects right from the SV-1. So, for example... So I've got all these different uh, flavors of effects that I can select from, and they are period accurate. And you may have noticed there are some very famous names tied to these sounds. We've got Frank McComb, you just saw Herbie a minute earlier. That is because, in order to program Kronos, Korg sought a little bit of help from our friends. Every artist that you see here had a hand in the voicing. So when you see their name on a preset sound, it means that the, the sound was designed with them to their exact specifications. So with that in mind, here's a, here's a great electric piano by George Duke. <laughs>
Now, along with that, you heard a drum track. By the way, was that grimacing enough? Was there enough of a? A little more. All right, I'll work on it. So the drum track gives you instant access to a library of nearly 700, 700 different grooves, some of which were programmed by Ricky Lawson. So you'll find any kind of rhythm you need to complement uh, the expression that you want out of the instrument. So there's a lot going on here. This is using MDS, multi-dimensional synthesis. Using this technology, we can assemble different aspects of the sound, pitched content, mechanical noises through time in such a way that we're not bound by velocity switching and other unnatural behavior that accompanies samples. So it's a wonderful new technology and it lends itself very well to electric pianos. But that's just two engines. Let's do another one, shall we? We've also included CX-3. The CX-3 is Korg's famous tone wheel modeling engine. So with this, you have instant hands-on control using the sliders to the left of the display, and you have access to an entire palette of sounds, including four imaginary drawbars that don't exist on the real instrument, where you can customize the pitch values. <laughs> So uh, you may have seen Jack reach over and hit the joystick. He was changing the speed of the rotary speaker emulation. Korg's world famous rotary speaker emulation here is here in full effect and it allows you to adjust the speed of the fast setting, the slow setting, the acceleration, deceleration. You can even decide where the mics are pointed and what position the cones are in when they stop spinning. Obsessive, maybe, but that's how we roll. <laughs> So uh, you also may have noticed how I'm selecting sounds. This is Korg's new set list mode. Set list is the grand unification of programs, combis, and sequences. On the screen you see 16 slots, each of which can hold program, combi, or sequence, and you can get to them just by touching. Each set list can have 128 slots grouped in uh, pages of 16, and you can have 128 different pages of set lists. So, if you need more than 16,000 slots, you're playing the most complicated gig known to man. <laughs> now, uh, there's also something else going on here that's truly wonderful. Notice what happened when I switched from one sound to another? Not a thing. Smooth sound transitions. They enable you to switch from program to combi, or from combi to combi, or from combi to program, or program to program, however you want, with no note dropouts and no loss of effects. And we managed to do this without limiting the number of notes you can play or effects that you're currently using at once. So this has been a very, very requested feature, and you'll see a little bit more about this later. Also, in set list mode, you're welcome, no problem. <laughs> in set list mode, you also have access to a nine band graphic EQ. So no matter what venue or studio space you're working in, Kronos can be suited to the venue. That's very easy to read, which I like. Now, believe it or not, there was a time when people used to buy synthesizers to program the sounds themselves. <laughs> Uh, it had to be easy, it had to be hands-on, had to be fun. And uh, Kronos delivers this in spades. We give you three different analog modeling engines to explore. The first of which is the MS-20 EX. It is a faithful point-to-point -point recreation of the original MS-20 monosynth. Only it's not monophonic anymore, now it's like having 48 of them. Kind of like a PS3300. So, uh, would you please? It's 
warm, it's thick, it's known for its aggressive filter, really, really powerful sound, and you have access to all the controls, and that patch panel is just as fun as it looks. I can choose a point and link it to another element of the sound that I'm currently playing. So for example, I'll take an LFO and link it to filter cutoff. And get chased around by a demonic Pac-Man. <laughs> so, along with the MS-20, you might remember the Poly-6. The Poly-6 returns as more of a Poly-180. So imagine 180 oscillators, pure Poly-6. Known for its warm, lush sound. Every control on the Poly-6 has been thoughtfully laid out on the control surface of Kronos. So using the sliders and knobs, you can tweak just like you could on the original instrument. We've made hands-on synthesis fun in so many different ways. And another very cool thing is that you can actually combine two different synth engines within a single program. Just like the original, the filters will self-oscillate, the LFOs and envelopes all sound great. Synthesis is fun again. So it's always nice to look backwards and, uh, and reminisce and recreate sounds and generate new sounds with this wonderful technology, but it's also nice to look forward. And for that, we have the AL1 analog modeling engine. AL1 is Korg's vision of what an analog synthesizer could be if it was designed today. It's incredibly powerful, very versatile for more reasons than I even have time to mention, much like the effervescent Mr. Jack Hota. So you have so many th different places to go in AL1. You have ultra-fast envelopes and LFOs, step sequencers. It's enough to turn you into a mad scientist. Look at what a single note on a single program of AL1 can do. No extra motion going on there from any other technology in the keyboard. That's all pure AL1. This is beautiful stuff. But the rabbit hole goes deeper. This is Mod 7. With all the engines we've given you already, there's so much for a synthesis or a live player or a studio musician to do, but we are not done. Mod 7 has its roots in classic digital synthesizers, which used frequency modulation to generate their sound. Only we go way beyond. And uh, what we've actually got here are some uh, very typical signature sounds that you might recognize from these classic keyboards. Some of which might make you suddenly want a chalupa, perhaps a gordita. And uh, another one, if you would.
big difference is, now we've given you an interface that makes this kind of synthesis fun. You can patch it, just like any other modular synthesizer. And you can go way beyond the capabilities of these classic instruments. You can actually incorporate PCM samples, ring modulation, wave shaping, and take these sounds to an alternate dimension. What started out as a model didgeridoo just became something from outer space. So, moving, quite, uh, moving right along, we've got even more synth engines to show you. This is STR1, our plucked string physical modeling engine. Here, you get to design a string, choose how it's made, how long it is, and then you get to either pluck, scrape, or strike it at any point in the string and depending on what kind of instrument it is, it'll have a different reaction. If it's an electric guitar, you decide where the pickups are located. If it's an acoustic guitar, you get to decide how close it is to the sound hole. And if it's a sitar, you get to decide the tension on the strings along with string dispersion. So it's great for all kinds of stringed instruments, and if you're playing something like a, a guitar, you can actually create harmonics the same way you would on the real instrument, by physically generating them on a string. So these aren't sampled instruments, these are being generated in real time. And, of course, being a chord synthesizer, we have to take you beyond what you think you might be able to do with a string and create sounds that couldn't possibly exist in the real world from a string. Pardon me. Chances are your guitar can't do that. So there's lots of different places to go here. As we move along, you thought we'd leave the least important engine for last. Well, not a chance. HD1, high definition synthesizer, is Korg's flagship sample-based engine. Here we have a gigantic collection of sounds, ranging from hip hop to orchestral. Here's some beautiful strings. and you might as well create the rest of the orchestra while you're at it. So, all of these different instruments can live on the hard drive, the solid state drive, and play back whenever you want. In fact, we have over 12 gigabytes of sample data on the hard drive that can be accessed at any time. It is truly a universe of sound, including some tape-based keyboards, new sample libraries there, wonderful acoustic instruments, and uh, also at the heart of HD1 is wave sequencing. First shown on the le uh, legendary wave station, wave sequencing lets you create smooth evolving textures or rhythmic grooves by cycling through a list of waveforms.
Jack showed you there, you can use the vector joystick on the left side of the keyboard to go even deeper with your wave sequence. So there's a lot of powerful stuff going on here. So we've seen all nine synthesis engines at this point. The truly wonderful thing about Kronos is how smoothly you can combine them all together. Using one combi, you can have 16 different instruments playing at once, incorporating all nine synthesis engines and much more. So I'd like to let you play for a few minutes, Jack, and show us what Kronos is really capable of. So much of the life and motion you heard being played there also came from Karma. Kronos incorporates Karma technology, which allows you to play rhythms and bass lines and create musical gestures for instruments such as guitar. Or you could actually strum it just by using the ribbon. Or all these wonderful uh, uh, rhythmic devices that you just heard Jack playing, and it even has its own brand of wave sequencing. Karma can be modified in real time using the control surface, and you can always see what you're doing on this control surface just by touching the control surface tab. So we always keep you informed of all the technology that's available to you. 
So, in addition to the live and synthesis prowess that Kronos has, we've also made it an extremely competent studio production tool. So, we give you a sequencer with 16 MIDI tracks and 16 audio tracks, which can be recorded at 24-bit. In addition to that, our open sampling system can be used at any time. Whenever the inspiration strikes, just press the sampling, record, and write buttons, and you're recording right away. Mix it down to a two-channel WAV file on the internal hard drive or a USB stick, or plug in a USB CD burner and create the album right from within the, uh, the Kronos itself. Our effect structure is pretty massive. We have many different types of effects, and you can use 16 of them at any one time. So, as you can see from our routing diagram here, more than one sound can be routed to a single effect, transcending the boundaries of hardware effects. So that's a very powerful thing. We also give you a very flexible routing and chaining and professional mastering tools, such as stereo compressors and stereo limiters. We've also got another kind of USB port. This allows you to plug into a computer where Kronos becomes an extremely powerful plug-in instrument. In fact, it becomes 16 extremely powerful plug-in instruments. And that USB port can function as an audio interface, transmitting audio directly to the computer. So, wouldn't it be nice if a computer could harness this much synthesis power and integrate it all together and manage all the engines in such a way that you have no latency and it's a seamless connection between you and the music. You never have to wait for the instrument to finish loading and match it up to another MIDI track. It's all immediate and right in front of you. That's, uh, that's an advantage that we can lend to your computer with USB. Please welcome solo artist and keyboardist for Dream Theater, Jordan Rudis. Um, the first thing I want to point out is uh, the really beautiful um, pianos, in this case, piano that uh, is in the Kronos. I think this is probably the best piano that I've ever played in a Korg uh, instrument. It's really, really beautiful. So this is the uh, called the Kronos German Grand. Yeah, I was going to play something that I wrote, but then I thought I'll just improvise something. So we'll probably never hear that again. I don't know what it was. Um, anyway, so yeah, so, all right, the reason that I'm here and the reason that I play Korg instruments, and a fact of the matter is that, yes, I play a lot of different instruments. I use a lot of different software. But if you look on stage for the last many years, you'll see a Korg instrument. And there's a really, really good reason for that. Uh, and that's what I want to make sure that everybody in this room is aware of. Because I know we all have a very wide perspective of what's going on in the music industry today. And you guys and myself, we're all very involved in technology. We see tons of like amazing things, incredible like software that comes out, computers and hard drives that can put, you know, these libraries which are just so massive and in some cases so cool. So it's kind of like, well, why, you know, why do something like a, a Kronos when you can get, oh, you can get that software, this software, you can get this, you can put it in your computer, you can buy this many hard drives and you can play. Well, in my opinion, and from where I'm coming from musically, there's a very, very solid reason why one would want to have this as a musical instrument to get the power. I mean, for me, what makes sense is putting my um, energy my faith, if you will, my musicality behind a team or a world like Korg. I trust the people at Korg, people who I know, some people who I don't know, to build an instrument that is truly musical, to take the existing technology that's out there, to decide, okay, we're going to take this technology, we're going to develop this, and we're going to develop this, and we're going to put it together, and we're going to make a cohesive musical instrument. What I want as a player, as a musician, is a cohesive musical instrument, something that I can have in front of me and know this is going to give me the power to get the job done that I need and inspire me as well. You know, I've tried a lot of the instruments that are more computer-based, and I use them for different things. But when it comes to the real work, to playing in dream theater and doing what I do on stage, and I need something that is really reliable, and I need something powerful and musical, and that's the reason I'm here. That's what this is all about. 
I was just remembering when I played this uh, over the last weekend, my first time playing at Karma, and I put my hand down and I went, oh my God, I gotta get that, That's, this is so cool. And I ended up writing an entire Dream Theater album, all based on the inspiration of the sounds. And you know a synthesizer is amazing when you play the sounds and you go, oh my God, I got all these song ideas, this is what it's all about. So again, when I played this, I remember calling up Jack Hotop and saying, Jack, you know, I have very limited time. Tell me some of the sounds that I should look at, maybe present. And he told me, you know, like four or five different things that were new or this. And I started playing them and going, oh, my God, I love all of these. These are so cool. So, all right, on with some music. Uh, I'm going to play some of the sounds that I found on my little search. And in some cases, kept the way they were. And in other cases, um, just modified a little bit make them a little bit more JR style. So these are basically just like factory patches. Maybe I added a little little something here or there. And here's a few of them that inspired me. That kind of thing is a really good example of, of, again, why I'm here, because I don't know what I just played. That was totally an improvisation, but it, it was like inspired because the sound is just so cool. You know, it just, I go, wow, it's like it's something, you know, it's support, it's, it's a supportive element. And if nothing else, you know, my, somebody might say, well, you can't write that because it's patterns that are in the machine or whatever, but the inspiration is there. Actually, this sound is something that I usually wouldn't, get that into, but there was something about this, it's kind of dancey and it's not usually my style, but you'll hear this one's really, really special, the way it kind of incorporates the whole karma and drum groove and all the different kinds of synthesis. Check this out. before I play my final piece that kind of really is, is mind-blowing, to think that it's all just one patch.
Hey, thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for coming to check out the Kronos. It's really, really awesome. Uh, before I go any further, I'd just like to point out two people that were integral to the design of Kronos from Core Gink that are here today. Yoshi Shoge-san, Taiki Mizumi-san. Thank you. Komarigato. <laughs> Without them, Kronos would not exist. So uh, that's a tough act to follow, so I'm not going to play anymore. Thank you all very much for coming tonight. You're witnessing a great moment in Korg's history. <laughs> <laughs>